Hello, my name is Jaden from XLR Security, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a Rayi Wi-Fi 6 access point quickly and easily using either a computer or a smartphone. So before we start with the actual configuration, we want to make sure that everything is connected and set up properly. For this demonstration, I have an 8-port PoE switch, which is connected to my router on port number 9, and this is giving internet to anything that's plugged into the switch. And you can see on port number 8, I have it connected to LAN number 1 on the bottom of my access point. And since this is a PoE switch, it gives both power and data to the access point. If you don't have a PoE switch, you can also power it with the 12 volt DC 2 amp power supply. But if you do have a PoE switch, you can just use one cable, so you're actually using less cables, and I really highly recommend using a PoE switch. So once you have everything plugged in properly, you should see a blinking blue light on your access point. This means that it's ready to connect and that we can move on to the next step. There are two ways that we can set up this access point. We can either use a laptop or a computer and log directly into the access point through the IP address, or we can use the Ray-E app on the smartphone and log into our cloud account to set it up. First, I'm going to show you how to set it up using my laptop. And this is a little bit more technical than if we're using the app, but don't worry because I'm going to make it as easy as possible for you to follow along. And if we're using a laptop or a computer, you don't have to sign up for a cloud account, which gives you a little bit more privacy and control over your device. But if you want to see the easier method, you can skip ahead to this time in the video where I'm going to show you how to set it up using your smartphone. In order to configure this access point, we need to log in through its IP address. But first, we need to find its IP address. And there are multiple ways to find the IP address of the device, but probably the easiest way is by using a tool called Angry IP Scanner. This tool allows you to scan all the IP addresses in your network. It's free, it's open source, and it works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. You can download it by simply going to angryip.org, click on the free download button, and choose Windows Installer. Or if you're using a MacBook or Linux, you can download one of the other packages. So once you have this program installed, go ahead and open it up. And by default, it should select the network adapter that your computer is using. But if it doesn't, and in my case, it doesn't because it's giving me the wrong IP address, then we need to click this little IP button with the arrow and then select your network adapter. So in my case, I'm using Wi-Fi, so I'm going to select the Intel wireless AC adapter, and I can see that the IP address is 10.0.0.3, which is the IP of my laptop. So I'm going to click that, and this is giving me the correct IP range. And then I also want to make sure that at the bottom, display is set to Alive only, so that I will only see the IPs on my network. Then I'm going to click Start to search. And it's going to take a couple seconds to search through the IP addresses. But when it's done, you're going to see a list of all the IP addresses and their corresponding MAC addresses within your network. And what I'm looking for is the MAC address that matches the one that's listed on the sticker on the back of my access point. So in this case, um, my access point MAC address is ending with 9E7656. And if you don't see the MAC address, you can click this little box here and choose MAC address and then click it over and click OK. And we have to scan again. OK, so we're looking for the MAC address, uh, which is on my access point. So that's 9E7576. So that's going to be this one. 9E7656. So that's my MAC address. And this is my IP address. So all I have to do is press Control C. And then we're going to open the web browser and press Control V to paste it and hit enter. And this will bring us to the web interface of our access point so that we can begin setting it up. And 
don't worry, that was the hard part that we just completed. And from this point, it gets a lot easier. So from the web interface, we need to enter the default password to log in, which is just admin all lowercase. And then go ahead and check the terms and conditions and then click on login. So on this page, it's going to automatically show you all the other RAID devices on your network. So for example, I have a switch as well as another access point on my network, and they're going to show up at the bottom. And if I want to, I can add them all together into one network, which is going to give them all the same settings and I can manage them. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to pretend that I have only one device. So I'm going to click on start setup. Now we're going to set the SSID and password for our access point. So I'm going to go ahead and set it to XLR office. And we want uh, encryption, so I'm going to choose security. And for the security algorithm, I recommend choosing WPA2 slash WPA3 because this is going to give you the more secure protocol WPA3, but it's also going to give you WPA2 for older devices that don't support WPA3. And then go ahead and set the Wi-Fi password and select your time zone. Now it's gonna ask you to set up a project, which is basically like a local group that all the devices of RAE can join together. So I'm gonna call my project XLR Office and then we're going to set a management password for this group. And this password is different from the Wi-Fi password. So the Wi-Fi password is where you're going to enter on your phone or laptop if you want to connect to the Wi-Fi. This management password is what you're going to connect if you want to log in to your access point and start changing the settings. So I'm going to choose a strong password for this one. And enter it again at the bottom and then click create network and connect at the bottom. And your device is going to start configuring the SSID and the password and everything. And it's going to take about a minute and reboot. So I'm going to skip forward to when that's finished. Okay, so it's been about two minutes and my device has rebooted. So I just refreshed this IP address page and we can see the login page again. So go ahead and log in with the password that you just set up. Again, this is the management password, which is going to bring you into the web interface of this access point. And from here, we can dive a bit further into the settings if you wanted to, like if you want to set up another SSID for your guest network, or if you want to adjust the signal strength of the Wi-Fi. But honestly, at this point, we're pretty much done. But I do want to recommend one more setting, which is called band steering and that can be found under Wi-Fi and then click on the edit button beside your SSID and that will be found under the advanced settings. So we're going to enable band steering. What this does is it will automatically push your device to the 5 gigahertz network if your device supports it and if it has a good signal strength. So this will give your devices faster network speeds Otherwise, they might just stay on the 2.4 network and they'll be having limited speeds. Hmm. And just to show you that everything's working properly, let me connect to the Wi-Fi that we just set up and do a speed test on my phone. Okay, so I'm connected to the Wi-Fi XLR office that we just set up, which is from this access point. Now, if I do a speed test, we should be able to see somewhere around maybe 300 to 400. And I believe this is actually as fast as my router is able to handle. So I'm using a little bit of an older Ubiquiti Edge router. And yeah, almost 400. So it's pretty good. We have gigabit fiber here, but you know, 400 and around 200 upload is pretty much the limitation that we have on our router. So that's it for setting it up through the computer. And at this point, if you want to get further into the settings, you can, but otherwise you are pretty much done. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to set up the RAE access point 
with a slightly easier method. I'm going to use the Ruji Ray app on my phone to add the access point through my Ruji Cloud account. You can download the Ruji Ray app from the App Store or the Google Play Store. And when you open the app, it's going to ask you to use your location services. And this is necessary in order for you to add devices. So click allow while using the app. Now, when you get to the home page, you want to click add a project in the middle. And this is going to prompt you to log into your Ruji Cloud account. If it's your first time using the app, click create account at the bottom and enter your email address and password to register for an account. But I already have an account, so I'm going to log in and I will be right back. All right. So now that we're logged into the Ruji app, you can click again where it says add project. And then it's going to ask you if you have any access points in your network. And obviously we do. That's what we're trying to add. So we go ahead and click yes. And this page is basically just telling you, you know, don't forget to power on all your devices and wait at least three minutes after you've powered them on, which we've already done. So we can click on start. And now it's telling you to connect to the Wi-Fi that's starting with at Ruji M. But if there's only one access point in your network, then you want to connect to the Wi-Fi starting with at Ruji S. Since we only have one access point, we're going to go ahead and click connect. And then we're going to look for the Wi-Fi that starts with Ruji S, which we can see it right here. Ruji S 7656. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to this Wi-Fi. So now that we're connected to the Ruji Wi-Fi, we can go back into the app. And since we only have one AP, we're going to select yes, continue. All right. And it's detecting that we have other devices on the network. But again, I'm just going to go ahead and click start config because for this demonstration, we're pretending that we only have one device. So start config, enter the project name. Um, and again, this project. It's like a local network for your Ray devices so that they can all join together in the same project. And then go ahead and enter a management password. And for the scenario, you can choose whatever it is. In this case, we're at the office. I'm going to select office. And now at this page, we're going to enter our SSID and the password. So enter your SSID. Oh, and for the encryption type, make sure that you set it as WPA2 slash WPA3. This is going to give you better encryption for devices that are using WPA3 protocol, while also allowing older devices to fall back to WPA2. So this is best for security and compatibility. Hmm. Okay. Once that's done, we click save at the bottom. And this is going to start updating the settings on our access point. And you can see that it's just loading, loading, loading in the middle. I'm going to skip forward to when this is done. It's probably going to take around a minute. Okay, actually, it only took a couple seconds. So now it's asking us to connect to the Wi-Fi. Um, so we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi on our phone. Perfect. Now we're connected to the Wi-Fi. So if we go back to the app it says inspecting so it's just making sure that we're actually connected to the wi-fi perfect added successfully so from this point we're pretty much done and you can honestly just leave it like this but i want to show you one more setting so we're going to go next so we want to select our device in the middle where it says rap2260 this may be different if you have a different device. We want to go to SSID. Click on the Wi-Fi. Hmm. And at the bottom, we're going to hit advanced settings. And then enable 5G prior access. So what this is going to do is if your device supports 5 gigahertz and your device has a good signal strength, it's going to try to push your device 
to use the 5.8 gigahertz network. This is gonna give your devices faster speed. And if they're outside the range of the five gigahertz network, they're automatically gonna fall back to the 2.4 gigahertz network. So I recommend this to, so that you will get faster network speeds on your devices. Once that's done, click save. And I'm gonna do a speed test just to show you that everything is working perfectly. Mm -hmm. Now that we're on the 5.8 gigahertz network, we should be getting a little bit faster network speed than before. So as you can see, we're at around 390-ish, which is pretty much the limit of what our network can handle here. So that's really good to see. All right, so I was playing around with the Wi-Fi access point a little bit more, and I found that I was able to almost double my network speeds by changing the channel width from 40 megahertz to 80 megahertz, and then changing the frequency to 56, which is a nice big empty spot on our network. So after that, we were able to get a lot faster speeds, and that's just something that I wanted to let you know. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials similar to this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.